Icarumba. A bison is grazing dangerously close to the road. Before we do anything else in this video, let's quickly build a fence for the safety both of the bison and the humans walking around it. Welcome to Shukaboa 100% Vanilla Baby. If you're new here, you'll soon find out that this is a City Skyline series quite different from the rest. Not only do we have bison and cougars roaming in close proximity to human sims, such as this cougar near the Chiagupi Miradoro in the Felipe G National Forest. But we have an entire city built on the principles of the world famous Meow method of detailing. If you haven't seen the award-winning cinematic video of this city, check it out now and see why this project, which spans over two years, is making waves among the elite of the elite in the world of City Skylines. Then come back to watch this, of course. Now, this episode is going to be my most special episode to date, and that's because we're going to build the Hall of Champions. What is the Hall of Champions? Well, keep watching and you'll find out. See, Shukaboa is a small, community-based channel, and every single person who interacts here gets a building name for them in this city. Those who go above and beyond get something extra special on the honor roll, but only the best of the best of the bestest have made it their personal responsibility to help keep this channel alive and have watched every single 100% Fidilla Baby episode from way back when I didn't even know how to YouTube. Because for my work, I go to sea in ships for months at a time. These champions have heeded the call and kept my channel active while I was away. For that, I am truly in their debt. The Hall of Champions will be a true monument to these epic humans who have proven that they are the most dedicated Shukabo gangsters in the history of history. Every episode save game is available for free in the Steam Workshop, so any vanilla babies or wanna babies who subscribe to it will forever see the names of these legendary Shukaboans etched into this glorious site in the city. During my time on the open ocean, boatloads of new DLC have been dropped, and it's been awesome finding out what kind of vanilla madness I can get up to with this new material that I can sculpt with. Now, some of this is old news for many of you, but for me, this is the first time I'm getting my hands all over this new stuff, such as the plazas and promenade streets and tiles I've been using so far. Apparently, I've got to put in a service point or something so that my pedestrian area will function, so let's just tuck it in over here near this rail spur. There we go. That should do the trick. A couple of bushes and a tree for good measure. Let's get rid of that stoplight too, nobody needs that. All right, that should do the trick. My esteemed audience, it is time to honor our champions. Please join me in giving the biggest respect to these heroes of the channel. Feel free to stand up and clap wherever you're watching. First, we have Isaura and Segolen. Next, we have Roman U and Roman M. Here, we have Christina MD and Triple D Cities. Next up, Gots 45 and Heather. Here we have Jude and Eddie Spaghetti. Over on this side we have Captain Obvious and Virtual Gamer.
here is Hein NS and the Big Q57. Next, Joy Build Cities and Canal Sala de Jogos. Jackie Paper and Pinko Polino are next in line. And finally, we have Fenrir and No Mercy. Bravo, sweet champions. You are now immortalized in the annals of 100% Vanilla Baby history now and forever. But wait, there's more. You may have noticed the Hall of Champions was rather flat, square, and symmetrical. Three words that you'd probably never use to describe Shukaboa 100% Vanilla Baby. What happened to the world famous Meow method of detailing? Well, I'm thinking by having one large area like this, it will always be sure to stand out in the city. Now, let's start applying our philosophy of city building by snaking in an extra wide canal. Why? Well, why not? A canal would be extra gangster and definitely help give us unique ways to implement interesting terrain transitions. Let's get a little wild over here and start making some cool shapes. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Let me use the seawall too. I really can never think of a good spot for these things. And inside the archway, we'll dig an evaporation and overflow basin. Okay, now with our canal in place, let's unpause and let it fill up full of water. I like to watch using the Water View Info tab because it shows the strength and direction of current. It really took a long time until I was sure that the water was stabilized here and around the city. This evaporation basin looks really... I... Caramba! We've got Grandma Skywalker over here. It's pretty, pretty trippy right there. Anyway, start adding little pieces of vegetation and trees. Yeah, I better stop now before I get too carried away. You know, this island I made kind of looks like a bison, but without feet. That's better. This park monument is really my style. It's like a statue that has all of the principles of Meow Method built right into it.
Let's do some preparation work to the shoreline of the new canal. Now the canal edges are prepped so we can make some good use of the waterfront. Keep watching, we're almost there with the Meow Method's most ambitious project yet. Our next order of business is adding in some rapid public transit to get our citizens across the canal in a timely fashion. Remember, I'm not using a single mod to build any of this. In order to get a perfectly smooth metro tunnel, I'll have to go back and forth from the Hoodie Ninja Metro Plaza underneath this hill that I just kind of randomly vomited right over here for no reason. Damn, that's looking smooth. Now let's put in one of these new Metro Tram Hub assets and tie into that. With the metro line now connected, let's get some tram lines going this way. Sweet! A tram ferry connection. Let's get it set at the correct level with my critically acclaimed gravel path trick. This was not intentional, but aw oh shucks am I pleased with the alignment of these gangways and tire fenders along the canal. Along the canal. But aw oh, shucks am I pleased with the alignment of these gangways and tire fenders along the canal. We can tie this tram line into this track that I left hanging since September of 2021 during the first season finale. Now let's go under the archway with some more tram action. That intersection's not gonna stay. I know it's gonna cause traffic, don't worry. Let's create a tram loop here so that maybe someday we'll connect it into the rest of the city. For now, the trams will need a way to turn around. For the ferries, we need to add a ferry depot since we won't be connecting to the Isoragiochi Ferry Depot in the Fish Market District. We'll just add one extra stop here so the ferries actually go in the canal. Let's check out these new boats. Oof! Well, bounced right off, so I guess those rubber fenders really work. Hold on to your butts. We've got extreme meow methodology coming right up. Okay, so off camera, I had spammed a pedestrian area to unlock some of the goodies that came with it. You can see the footprint it left in our taxation record in the city statistics. Here you can see some of the new assets I got by doing that spamming. But I didn't do the stock exchange stuff. 
So let me do that really quickly here now by buying and selling all the stocks when I place down the stock exchange. There is a reason that I want to show you this. I'm going to level up the stock exchange to the max, but I don't want that building that comes with it. So now I'll sell all the stocks, sometimes at a loss, although I did end up making a net profit, and I'll demolish the building. Now I'll put down a new one back in its original level 1 stage, and start the whole process over again. This time I'll only upgrade to level 2 though. In my opinion, level 2 and level 3 are the best looking of the 5 levels of stock exchange, but that is my opinion and yours may vary. Remember, everyone's city is unique and as long as you are using principles like the Meow method or whatever you like to make sure that the city is looking good, you'll be happy with whatever level you choose. We'll make a pedestrian area here and call it Exchange Park put the financial center specialization on it. Then we'll make a district and call it Exchange Hook, even though I think it kind of looks like a big bird's beak. I'm going to choose Heart of Korea for the district style, so that way the high density commercial gives me some nice new assets that I can blend into this scene, along with select financial center buildings. This elevated plaza is really awesome. I think it'll be a great asset at the tip of the hook. And across from the hub, let's put the art gallery that came with Isla Isaura University. The curvature of the windows really match the shape of the oval overhang in the hub. Now I'm going to add one of these new key walls with trees on them because why not? We'll dig a quick trench around and it conveniently is already getting filled because of the proximity to the canal, I think. I'm not totally sure, but we'll use it. I think this service point building will look just a little bit better set back from the main road. Okay, I won't over explain anything here because it's really just going to be trial and error to get the perfect growable assets in the right spots. While I wait for things to level up and grow, I always go around detailing the area off camera. Here we go. Firstly, you'll see that I added another key wall and I put this vanilla painted mural right alongside of it using a variety of different tiles and park props. Yeah, I know it flickers a little bit with the vanilla LOD, but that's okay. In a screenshot, that's gonna look really good. On the other side, I was trying to make a decorative pattern, but it ended up looking kind of like a vineyard or something. So let's just call it that. I even put a little agricultural shed there for it. Alright, we'll fly over that whole area a little bit closer later on, but now let's get work in our next area. Now we're going to set up some tiers here underneath Bookmark Hill a small neighborhood that I built early in Season 2. After setting up some streets and paths, let's name this neighborhood Bookmark Basin.
will put the wall-to-wall -wall residential and the shopping mall's commercial specializations, and this will make for a low-profile, textured building layout, full of lots of earthy tones and bright tiled buildings. We also added a pedestrian bridge over to our Bison Island Park. Now, let's make a waterfront district all around this island, and we'll use self-sufficient residential, wall-to-wall -wall commercial, and IT cluster office buildings. This part of the Meow method, the mixed zoning, density, and districts, is critical for getting a unique look, and to be honest, it takes the most time to get that look just the way you want it when you're playing vanilla. But I tell you, every single building really is something special when you take that much time and effort to make sure that they fit just right into your city. Like before, we'll return to that after every project in this video is complete. And the next project is this mountain that I just kind of vomited over here. Let's fix the Joy Build City Park low to eliminate any four-way junctions that we might end up getting. Now we can start to add some layers of terrain in steps. People often think building on terrain is difficult or ugly, but they typically don't do any landscaping work in advance when they're saying that, and really, that makes all the difference. I feel bad we didn't name Exchange Hook as Toucan Hook, so let's call this Toucan Mountain. It also kind of has a bird head layout, but not quite as much as the hook. And we'll put a different little waterfront district right down here, too. Now let's zone and plot this place full of buildings. I chose Modern Commercial Center Waterfront District so we could get rows of shops near the water. And coming back this way, we have the Sea and Sky Tower kind of all by itself. A great little skyscraper that isn't too overwhelming for a city of this size. Tried to blend the Concord District a little bit up into the edge there so I could get some standard vanilla buildings mixed in with my self-sufficient buildings that I put in as well. Put in a little plaza there, and here I added the International Trade Center building near our Quincentennial Arch Roundabout. Now, over here on this little mound, I put a question mark, and that is because I want all of you to choose what goes here next video. Get ready to leave a comment telling me if you think the Modern Art Museum, or if you think the aquarium would look better over in this hill. Obviously, when I place them, I'll try to be a little bit more specific about their orientation, but I really like the pointy geometry that each of them has on their roofs. I think that's going to be great for the sight line that looks over towards Exchange Hook. Let's put that question mark back. Now, I'd like to say thank you, gracias, obrigado, merci, and danke to all of the new people who will get name buildings. 
Now, I have over 100 names, so we'll be doing it in an upcoming live stream. But the following honor roll members will be named here, and we'll start with Overcharged Egg, who did a build based on my Skyline 6 Waterfront episode. We'll give him the stock exchange, and I'll call it the Overcharged Egg Stocks. I could have written Egg Exchange, but I really want people to like me at least a little bit, and <laughs> I think that might be pushing it. Now, as for this art gallery, let's name this for Raid Kitty. Raid Kitty was actually kind enough to host me as I was driving down the east coast of the United States after I got off my ship. Here in the sea and skyscraper, we'll call it the Joy Build City's Tower. Because it's like vanilla, but with a twist. Here we've got the vertical farm, and I'm gonna name this for Shake Games Library. Excellent vanilla builder, and he does some great meow method detailing in his cities. At the International Trade Building, I'm going to call this the CS Vanilla Facebook Group Headquarters. City Skylines Vanilla Facebook Group is a group on Facebook, obviously, that I am one of the administrators of. It's got a great community of excellent, talented vanilla builders and just really cool people who like to share their work. Here, we'll call this the Ricky King National Library. Ricky's been helping me admin the City Skylines Vanilla Facebook Group while I was away at sea. Here at this really cool botanical museum, we'll call it the Cities by Stephen Botanical Museum. I actually asked Stephen uh, randomly if he'd prefer that or the Ferris wheel, and he chose that, so there we go. Here in this office zone landmark that looks over the Pont des Champions, we'll call this the Flyvox Talk Cities Podcast HQ. Flyvox hosted me and some other very talented builders in his podcast, and if you haven't heard it, you should head over to his channel and check it out. Finally, down here, I've created this unique little spot with the Postmodern Art Museum, and we'll call it the Joe Franta Postmodern Art Museum. You'll see I put a little fish sculpture wearing glasses right next to it, because Joe has the fresh fish market over in the fish market district. Now it's time for the award-winning cinematic flyover, showcasing all the nuance and detail that this project holds. Making this city and these videos with all of you over the past two years has become a consuming passion, something that I dream about constantly, and I absolutely love how the community of awesome people has rallied behind it. If you'd like to be involved in the community, join my shared Discord server, The City of Friends, where you can find a lot of great people who love this game and everything about it. Or you can find me in City Skylines Vanilla on Facebook. Again, let me say how much I appreciate you being here. Enjoy the cinematics. Don't forget to like the video if you've made it this far. And, as always, I'll see you next time.